Hello and welcome to another episode of Uncomplicated English with Mark, where we learn English through real-life stories that are so interesting that you forget that you're studying. Today, we're going to learn about the life of one of the world's most famous authors, Ernest Hemingway. Before we get started, as always, I would like to remind you that the entire transcript of this episode can be found for free on my website. Also, on my website, you can book one-to-one conversational English lessons with me. All right then, let's get started with today's episode. Hemingway was born on July the 21st, 1899 in Illinois. For the first few years of his life, his mother dressed him up as a girl. Many believed that this left a mark on Ernest Hemingway and made him rebel against this and create a super masculine image for himself. Throughout his life, he tried to be very masculine and tough. And later on in his life, Ernest Hemingway would say that he hated his mother. His father was the opposite to his mother. He liked to take Ernest out hunting, fishing and camping. From 1913 to 1917, Ernest attended Oak Park and River High School, where he took part in a number of sports such as boxing, track and field, water polo and football. But Ernest really excelled in his English classes. That was his best subject. It was in high school where his first piece of work was published. In 1916, he wrote a report about a performance by the Chicago Symphony Orchestra. This would be the start of his journalistic career. After high school, he worked for six months at the Kansas Star. The Kansas Star was a newspaper. It was there where he learned to write, in short and exciting sentences. This would be the style of writing that would make him famous and can still be seen in all of his writing. In early 1918, Hemingway applied to join the U.S. Army to fight in the First World War, but he was rejected because of his poor eyesight. So instead, he signed on to be an ambulance driver in Italy. On July the 8th, Ernest was seriously wounded by mortar fire, but despite his injuries, he helped Italian soldiers to safety. For this, he received the Italian Silver Medal for bravery. His legs were severely damaged and he spent six months in hospital recovering. Whilst he was recovering, he met and fell in love with Agnes von Kurowski, a nurse seven years older than him. When he was released and returned back to the United States, the two had decided that they were going to marry. However, Hemingway's plans were ruined a few months later when he received a letter from her saying that she had become engaged to an Italian officer. This hurt Hemingway deeply and many suggested affected his future relationships. After the war, Hemingway became a freelance writer for the Toronto Star and worked as an editor in Chicago. A freelance writer is a writer who writes articles and news stories and then sells them to other newspapers. They don't work for any one company. Whilst in Chicago, he met Hadley Richardson. Hadley was seven years older than Hemingway, but the two quickly began a relationship, got married and moved to Paris. Often, when we think of Hemingway, we also think of Paris. At this time, Paris was the place to be. It was filled with poets, writers, painters, musicians, and Hemingway fitted in perfectly. Over the next few years, Hemingway continued to work for the Toronto Star as a foreign correspondent. This meant he would report and write about things that were going on in other countries. During this time, he also published his first few stories, and his reputation began to grow. It was in Paris that he met the great American novelist F. Scott Fitzgerald, Hemingway and Fitzgerald would go on to have a tumultuous friendship 
in which they would secretly admire each other's work whilst they tried to one-up each other. When I say that they had a tumultuous relationship, this means that their friendship had a lot of ups and downs. Sometimes they were very friendly and other times they would not be. After travelling to Spain in 1925, Hemingway wrote his first major novel called The Sun Also Rises. This book reflected how many people of his generation felt after the First World War. Many felt lost and damaged. The book received good reviews and many considered it his greatest novel. But whilst he was writing The Sun Also Rises, his marriage began to fall apart and his wife found out that he was having an affair with Pauline Pfeiffer. The two divorced in January 1927 and Hemingway quickly got married to Pauline Pfeiffer in May. By the end of the year, Pauline was pregnant and the couple decided that they wanted to move back to America. In 1928, Hemingway received terrible news. He received a phone call that told him that his father had committed suicide. A few days earlier, Hemingway had written a letter to his father telling him not to worry about money, but the letter arrived a few minutes after his suicide. A year later, in 1929, Hemingway published his next novel, A Farewell to Arms. This book was received with great praise and made Hemingway even more famous. This book has an autobiographic dimension. This means that the main character in this book is quite similar to Hemingway. The main character is an ambulance driver in the First World War who falls in love with a nurse when he is recovering from an injury in the hospital, just like Hemingway himself. In 1934, Hemingway bought a boat and began to sail frequently to the Caribbean and became obsessed with fishing. In 1937, Hemingway decided to go to Spain and report on the Spanish Civil War. Whilst there, he would meet and begin an affair with famous war reporter Martha Gellhorn. Hemingway wanted to make a documentary about the war and held a strong hatred for fascism and hoped that his documentary might bring America into the war. Once he finished filming the documentary, he went to the front lines of the war to write more reports on the war. Whilst there, he met many interesting soldiers from all around the world that had come to Spain to fight against fascism. These people inspired many of the characters in one of his future books called For Whom the Bell Tolls. Eventually, Hemingway returned back to America where he gave many fierce speeches in support of the Republican forces that were fighting against the fascists in Spain. Whilst in America, he passionately promoted his film and even showed it to the American president Franklin D. Roosevelt. Hemingway returned to Spain two more times in 1938, but in the end, the Republicans won the war and Hemingway was never the same again. Clearly, Hemingway never liked to stay in one place for too long. And in 1939, Hemingway began to spend his winters in Cuba and his summers in Idaho. At this time, he was going through another divorce, this time with Pauline. Martha joined him in Cuba and they married a year later in 1940. In Cuba, Hemingway became fascinated with cats and famously began to breed cats with six toes. In Cuba... Hemingway worked hard on his next novel, which was called For Whom the Bell Tolls. It was published in October 1940 and was a smash hit. It was very popular. It sold half a million copies in its first few months and re-established him as one of the best American writers. Whilst in Cuba and with the Second World War going on, Hemingway convinced the Cuban government to modify his boat so that he could use it to hunt German U-boats. 
Despite his efforts, Hemingway never sunk or even found a U-boat. In 1944, Hemingway returned back to Europe to report on the Second World War. In London, he met Mary Welsh, and he became infatuated with her. This means that he was obsessed with her. He couldn't stop thinking about her. At the same time, his marriage with Martha was deteriorating. He refused to help her get a press pass for the war. So instead, she had to cross the Atlantic in a ship filled with explosives. When she arrived in London, she found them in a hospital with a concussion that he had got in a car crash. She wasn't sympathetic and told him he was a bully and that they were finished. Hemingway stayed in Europe and reported on the Normandy landings. After the landings, Hemingway followed the fighting to Paris where he accidentally became a leader of a small band of militia. He became the leader of a small group of French freedom fighters. This is actually something that reporters are not allowed to do, and is a rule of the Geneva Convention. He continued to follow the war, but eventually became ill with pneumonia and missed the end of the war while he recovered. In 1947, After the war, he was given the Bronze Star Medal for his bravery during the Second World War. In 1946, he went back to Cuba and married Mary. In the next few years, his health began to worsen and he began to suffer from severe headaches and high blood pressure. In 1950, he published his next novel called Across the River and Into the Trees. But for the first time in his career, the book was not received well and many were disappointed with it. This angered Hemingway and he immediately began to work on his next novel called The Old Man and the Sea. When it was released, it was highly praised and sold incredibly well. And once again proved that Hemingway was still one of the best. In 1954, Hemingway went with his wife on a trip to Africa. During the trip, he was in two near-fatal plane crashes. In both the crashes, he received serious injuries to his head. Nonetheless, he stayed in Africa and went on a fishing trip. But his bad luck continued, and there was another incident, and he received second-degree burns to his legs, torso, and arms. To combat his pain, Hemingway began to drink even more than he had before. In October, he won the world-famous Nobel Prize for Literature. Over the next few years, his health grew even worse. He was told to stop drinking alcohol by his doctor, and at first he listened and stopped. But eventually, he started drinking again and many believe that he became depressed around this time. In 1960, he got worse and was often paranoid that the FBI were watching him, and he worried about money and his taxes. In 1961, he was taken to a clinic where he received electroconvulsive therapy. This is where a person is given electrical shocks to their head. At the time, this was fairly common, and many believed it an effective treatment. He left the clinic and seemed even worse than he had before. Three months later, his wife found him in their kitchen with a shotgun, and she sent him back to the clinic. When he was released for the second time, he shot himself in the head with his favorite shotgun. Hemingway left a huge mark on literature. His style of writing influenced many writers and even today many attempt to write like him. His books have been transformed into movies and plays and to this day his books continue to sell well. In 1965 his wife set up the Hemingway Foundation. Thank you for listening. I hope you enjoyed this podcast and found it interesting. Once again, the complete transcript for this episode can be found on my website.